I love Mark Sargent. He is not crude or vulgar, he is super friendly and really positive, and according to Rob Skiba, Mark Sargent was the guy who recruited him into Flat Earth. So gotta love him for that. Anyway, recently he was interviewed on Odyssey Radio. The whole interview was about an hour and a half, and in it he said something that was so good I had to share it. Also, his radio interview didn't have any visuals, so I thought, I've got to add some visuals to this. So, here you go. Enjoy. Let's say, for example, the second floor of where you live right now, you turned into a little vacuum chamber, right? You know, like 20 feet by 30 feet or whatever, right? And you put a valve above your head and, you, and, a, and a lever and you pull that lever. What happens? It's not like the movies. It is instant. It is violent. The air will absolutely equalize in a fraction of a second. You know, any any deep sea diver will tell you this. Anybody that works on oil rigs, any submarine people, they will all tell you this. It is extremely violent pressure next to non pressure, even though you can't see it. You know, like right, right now, what we're breathing in right now is not nothing. It's it's 80 percent nitro uh, nitrogen and 20 percent oxygen. Right. So what happens when you pull that valve above your head? It just fires up instantly. And in fact, you'll probably black out. You might even die. And so right when it gets to full vacuum, this mylar will rupture. And so it will be a catastrophic sudden failure, which will simulate what would happen if you were in space and suddenly the wall behind you got blown out. Whoa! So when you go outside, <laughs> Why is our atmosphere still here? You know what I mean? Meaning yeah. our atmosphere sits right next to the vacuum of space, the purest vacuum of space. I've talked to vacuum chamber experts, you know, it's, and when you have a pure vacuum, it's even it's, it's like orders of magnitude even stronger. So your first and only knee jerk response to that will be gravity it is well, gravity. Oh, gravity is obviously holding the air down. I go, you mean the same gravity that couldn't keep the air in your living room from rushing upstairs? That gravity? The exact same gravity? Mm -hmm. And then people kind of get stuck because they know, you know, science says, well, it has to be gravity, otherwise we'd be dead. And I go, that's not how the logic works. You, what is the barrier? And they say gravity. And I go, gravity is not a barrier. Tell me what happens when you get to the bleeding edge of space, where our atmosphere ends and space begins. Tell me what happens. No science, science can tell me. They just stuck. And they just said, well, it's got to be gravity. And that's the end of the, the discussion. It's like, and, and it's because it's the only option for them. I go, other than being a pressurized system, you know, that we're living inside a dome, we're living inside a, a snow globe that's holding the air in. I mean, there's a reason why they call it air pressure. Oh, and while we're at it, there's a reason why they call it greenhouse gases. Doesn't it make more sense if it's an actual physical greenhouse? I, did, I never understood that even before I was in the flat earth, you know, like when fluorocarbons, when we, we were talking about the, uh, you know, the ozone layer, we're banning styrofoam yeah. things at, at McDonald's and we're banning underarm aerosol deodorants because Cans like, oh, no, the fluorocarbons <laughs> get up to the atmosphere, they just stay there. Yeah. And, and as I'm getting older, I'm going, how do they stay there? So anyway, that's, that's my big cling to, but most people, it, it takes them a while because again, a vacuum is invisible. You know, you you could be sitting in a vacuum chamber right now and and visibly because of our spectrum, what we can see and what we can't see, you no one would know. So that, that, that's a very convincing argument. Uh, that is very interesting because you would think if gravity is and, and I'm not a scientist, I'm, I'm a science uh, nerd wannabe. Sure. Uh, but uh, it seems like uh, it, it, so the gravity would have to be more powerful than the vacuum that exists within space to suck in or hold in this this system so that. Uh, oh, yeah. the, so that space didn't just rip us apart right right and there's no and there's no examples of that i mean and, and you can defy gravity all day long when you're like take a straw into a, a drink right whatever it is iced tea soda it doesn't matter like you are going against gravity you're creating a small vacuum force and and to, to drink that liquid right it, it's it's easy a vacuum force will beat gravity every day of the week but that's not what we see when we watch television and movies. It's always the same thing, right? There's a hole in the side of the spaceship, right? It's like, oh, Lord, we're decompressing. We only got two minutes of air left, right? Get the duct tape, you know, and it's this race against the clock. It's like, no, it's instant. 
I mean, it's a fraction of second. And if you ever see that in a space movie, which is why I I, I know it kind of dates me, um, the uh, the James Cameron movie Aliens oh, yeah. from years ago, right? The end where Ripley opens up that door to space, right? Everything's getting sucked out. She's fighting, climbing the ladder. It's like, no, 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 no. She's dead. The little girl's dead. The alien's dead. The, the Marines are dead. Everybody's dead. Movie's over. Roll the credits. <laughs> We can only have a pressurized atmosphere so long as there is a container. The existence of our atmosphere proves there is a firmament above our heads. Thanks for watching, everyone. Love you, Mark. If you'd like to see his interview in full, here's a link to that.